Hey guys, it's me. <laughs> Are we missing music right now? If anyone's in the chat, uh, could you let me know? No tunes. Oh man. All right. Well, we got a minute, so I'm going to spend a minute talking to you guys. <laughs> How's it going, Grant? Uh, I see you in here. What's going on? I am sorry. There's no music. I could sit here and freestyle for you for the next 45 seconds, but I don't think anybody wants to hear that. Uh, hopefully, I actually have audio. The last two days, I haven't had audio because I unplugged my mic. But um, if you can hear me, please let me know <laughs> so that I don't go into the live show and uh, nobody can hear me. Um, just somebody confirm, please. Thank you. Please and thank you. Um. I'm trying to turn on my stream to see if I can hear myself. And I don't think I have audio. Uh, okay. All right. One second. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? <laughs> I don't. One second. I don't think my audio is working. Oh, my mic is good. It is good. <laughs> Thank you, Grant. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Good afternoon. Uh, this is ha this is hashtag TNT JoFi. I am all over the place today. I um I also forgot I don't have a a hat on. <laughs> Uh, I always have my hat on. I don't have it on today. I I was very busy before this happened. I was uh, actually working on a couple things. And then I was like, oh, the live stream, we got to do this. So um, how's it going? Let me start over. Hello, everybody. Welcome to hashtag TNT Joe fight tech news that Jerome Ortega finds interesting. I am your host, uh, Jerome Ortega. <laughs> Grant says way to be a pro, Jerome. <laughs> I know very much a pro. This is what I do for a living. This is uh, episode something something because I lost count. This is also day something something in quarantine because I lost count. But uh, nice to have everybody here. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, I uh, I have a good amount of news and I really did not prep for this because I had so much going on. And at the same time, I need to put um, this uh, one clip up really quick. So I'm going to try to find this right now as I sit and talk to you guys. But how's everybody doing uh, this lovely Tuesday? Um, is it Tuesday? My watch is not even, my watch is telling me I'm playing something on my phone and I'm not. Uh, I'm not even looking at the right thing. Where is this? Today we're going to talk about the OnePlus Nord is what we're going to talk about as I figure out uh, where this actual... Oh, here it is. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Um, I just want to share a clip for you guys, or at least some sort of a clip. But anyway, okay, let's get started. OnePlus Nord, it has been confirmed. Not that it really wasn't already, but that first docu-series came out for the OnePlus Nord. Did you guys watch that? Actually, before I get into that, let me say hi to chat. Let me say hi to everybody in here. Also, I apologize that there's no music. I I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I do know what I'm doing. It's just, it's been a very hectic day. Um, anyway, I will get that fixed later. I am so sorry. Grant is in here uh, to let me know. There are no tunes, but uh, Grant, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Nice to have you. Brian is in here as well. What up, Jerome and Grant? What up, Brian? What's going on, man? How's it going? Um, Team Vrai says, it's been so long since I've had a regular daily show that I tune into, and I think I finally found it again here. I'm glad. I am glad that somebody says that. I'm glad that you guys are able to come in and, and have uh, something consistent, something regular, where we can actually have a show and discuss. So um, thank you, Team Vrai, for saying that. Hope everyone's having a pleasant day. Uh, I am so far. Levin Williams is in here as well. What's up, stream? What's up, Levin? What's going on, man? How you doing? Appreciate you stopping by. Big House Productions is also here as well. Hey, Jerome and Stream. Nice to have you uh, pretty much on the dot. Uh, Big House Productions, uh, nice to have you as well. Deepak Murthy is in here. All the regulars are in here. I wish we could just like be at a bar and I'd give you beers and we just drink and talk um, tech and have a good time. We should actually do that one day if if that ever becomes a thing, whenever this ends, if it ends, um, that would be great. Uh, Deepak says, hey, Jerome, what's going on, Deepak? Nice to have you, man. Glad you can make it. Um, 
Brian says, everyone check out Grant S camera tests on the Xperia one Mark two after the stream. Yes, please do that. Uh, Grant, Grant has the Xperia one Mark two. Uh, I think I talked about this yesterday as well. Um, please check out his stuff. Grant, Grant always has some good stuff out there. Um, Deepak with the two, uh, Euro super chat. Uh, I had to remember if it was Euro or pound and I'm like looking at the symbol and I'm like, no, that's a Euro. Uh, Deepak, uh, thank you for the support, man. Thank you for the, the extra early support. Appreciate it. Thank you for being a now pretty much a long time supporter being a regular. Um, thank you for, you know, going that extra mile to, to support in that way. I appreciate it so much. Deepak, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wait, uh, Ruben is in here. Arcillin NYC. I said it right this time. What up, Jerome? What up, phone Jerome fam? Listening from work again. Uh, Arcillin NYC. Nice to have you. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, thanks for making it right at the top of the hour here. Um, okay. So guys, let's, uh, let's talk about, um, let's talk about this one plus Nord. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about with this Nord is, did you see this docuseries? I, Actually, I don't think my audio is playing anyway, so it doesn't matter. This is a 10-minute docu-series about this new phone that they want to make, this this Nord, whatever you want to, I was going to say, whatever you want to call it. That's what it's called. It's called the Nord. Anyway, this was a quite a long, wait, the audio is playing now. Damn it. And now I'm going to get copyright. <laughs> Hopefully not. Why is the music playing now and it wasn't earlier? Okay. Oh, actually, you can't even hear it because I have it muted on my end. But so this OnePlus Nord apparently is now a thing. I think I guess they've updated their handle, right, to OnePlus Nord. Am I looking at this properly? I didn't even realize this. Or is this a different video? Or is this not even the right channel for it? Maybe this isn't even the right channel for it. Is it? It is. This is the same one. OK. Anyway, I watched this docu-series. Let me start over. The OnePlus Nord is coming. This new docu-series came out. And I watched it. It's about 10 minutes long. And I don't know. I had mixed thoughts on this. I know that this is a marketing thing for OnePlus. They want to present this new sub $500 phone, which when I heard sub $500, I'm like, man, so what? Is this phone going to be 500 bucks now? The, the rumor was we were thinking maybe it might be as cheap as 330 or 350 or maybe 400 at the most. And now it might be 500 bucks, which I'm hoping it's not going to be 500 bucks. I mean, I still don't think it's going to be an awful price at 500, but I would love to see it cheaper. Anyway, I watched this event or watched this docuseries, the very first episode. And to me, the way that I interpreted this video was hey, we have a new phone coming out that's going to be under $500 and we're rushing to put it out. That's what I got out of this whole 10 minute video. I know there's more to it and I'm sure we're going to learn more about this Nord. Again, this is a big marketing thing that they're putting here, new beginnings, all this kind of stuff. But I felt like this whole docuseries was nothing more than we got to put this phone out in six months. Let's do it as fast as possible. None of us are going to sleep. All of us are going to rush to get it out. And to me, that doesn't sound promising at all. Now, OnePlus puts out good hardware. They put out good phones. I have to state that. But the, the intent, or at least what I've seen from this very first episode, just it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. I'm excited that they're going to bring out a new phone and I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. Hopefully at a $500 price point, it does make me second question things, but for anybody else, have you watched this? What did you guys think of it? It was somewhat entertaining, but honestly, I'm just here to see the phone and what, they put in it and the price point and what specs are in it and how good the camera is going to be. I would rather watch that than watch because what, how many, how many episodes of this is going to come out? I think four, maybe four. I, I really am hoping that um, it, it's like 40 minutes of what them talking about how they're going to put this phone together. I don't know. It's content and it's good hype, I guess, but it's not really the hype I was looking for. Well, 
let's let's read on though. Let's talk about the OnePlus Nord. Let's discuss what specs are in it. We have hashed this to death, but I don't know. It's always interesting to talk about. And now that we have a possible new price point, it brings up another discussion, you know, at the table. So this article from The Verge says OnePlus has announced a new product line of cheaper phones called OnePlus Nord with the goal of making the quote premium OnePlus experience accessible to more users. Here, here's my issue with that. The premium OnePlus experience accessible to more users, that was already a thing. That was something that OnePlus was doing for a while. And then they took that away when they started upping the prices on all of their phones. Now they're here putting a new market segment in for a cheaper device, which isn't going to have the top of the line specs, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Let me, let me get through this article. We are immensely proud of our flagship products and we'll continue to create more tech leading flagships for our users. Now we are excited to share the OnePlus experience with even more users around the world through this new product line. Uh, commented OnePlus CEO Pete Lau in the announcement. OnePlus originally began by selling cheaper devices. The original OnePlus One started at just $299, but it's become best known for its premium smartphones over the past few years, like the current OnePlus 8 and 8 Pro. Those models have attempted to challenge phones from more entrenched brands like Samsung or LG by offering comparable high-end features and designs at lower prices than most flagships. But even the cheapest OnePlus devices right now start at $699. The new Nord line will look to alleviate that issue by offering cheaper phones than the company's current offerings. OnePlus hasn't offered too many details on what the first OnePlus on what the first OnePlus Nord phone will look like, but it has said that it'll launch in Europe and India. North American customers interested in the OnePlus Nord line will have a chance through a highly limited beta program. Okay, I that doesn't uh, that doesn't sit well with me either. That reminds me of like the OnePlus One with their invite system, and that was the whole reason I never even attempted to get one because I didn't want to go through that invite system or whatever. But yeah, I don't know what they mean by a quote, highly limited beta program set for after the main launch internationally. Earlier leaks indicate that the first OnePlus Nord phone, which at one point was rumored to be called the OnePlus Z or the OnePlus 8 Lite, will feature a Snap 765G processor, a 6.55 inch 90 hertz OLED display, six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. Uh, the phone is also expected to offer a 48 megapixel main camera as well as a 16 megapixel wide angle lens. OnePlus is expected to announce more details about the first OnePlus Nord phone at a July 10th launch event in India. That is, well, 10 days from now. So um, next Friday. So we don't have to wait too long for when this phone is going to be announced or at least what specs we're going to get in it. I wonder though if the $500 price point or when they, so that $500 price point came, I think in that video, I think they talked about it being a sub $500 phone. I don't know. I don't want it to be 500 bucks. I'm really hoping for $400 price point just so we have a little more competition. So it'll compete with the iPhone SE. And then we don't have to be like, well, but the Nord is a hundred dollars more and the camera isn't even as good. I'm speculating that the camera isn't going to be as good as the iPhone SE, but if history has proven itself, the camera phones on OnePlus devices haven't always been the best. And I'm assuming on a cheaper phone that the OnePlus Nord will probably not be able to compete with the iPhone SE. Would I love to be wrong? Yes, please be like Jerome. You were wrong. And I'll be like, good. I'm glad. Uh, that is my hope, but I really don't know. So let me get into chat. Let me let me see how you guys feel about this Nord. I I'm I didn't realize it was going to be on a quote highly limited beta program, which is for me, I, I'm not going to jump through hoops to get a phone. Like I don't mind if I have to go online and order it and say, hey, there's only a limited amount, so make sure you pre-order it on such and such day. I would be more open to that, but if I have to jump through hoops and fill out forms and, I don't know, wait to get invited or do something like follow them on Instagram and comment Nord for the win or something cheesy, then I don't really know. Um, okay, let me, let me go back into chat here. Uh, 
so let me see here. Uh, Levin says having a beer with good people would be on point one day, hopefully one day, hopefully one day. Um, yeah, Brian says, yep, it's going to be 499. Uh, Team Verai says, I was hoping for 299 to be honest. That is like very optimistic. Uh, I was, for me, I was hoping for 350. That was my hope. Yeah, Big House is saying the same thing. Hopefully 350. Uh, Deepak says, I hope it'll be around 449, but don't think so. Um, Grant says, I'm not paying, uh, I'm not paying attention to any of that OnePlus marketing for this phone. It's too much. I feel like they're, they've done way too much for this, but marketing usually what is what gets people hyped up. So I guess in a way I can't blame them, but they've, they've made a separate Instagram account. They've made a docu-series that is, if you ask me, sounded very overly dramatic watching this docu-series. Um, that's all I have to say. I, it wasn't to me, it was mildly entertaining, but I was really only watching it to see if they were actually going to talk about what the phone was going to be or how they were going to make it or what specs could be in it. But they didn't talk about any of that. It was just like, we got to get this phone out. None of us sleep. All of us work all day. That also doesn't sound promising either. <laughs> um, Brian says, we were all hoping it would be under 400 bucks at $500, just get last year's OnePlus 7 series. And that's actually something I was going to talk about. So this OnePlus Nord will be 500 bucks. Will it have 5G? Yeah. Will it have a 90 hertz display? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> but at $500, yeah, like Brian is saying there, you could get a OnePlus 7 Pro, a OnePlus 7T, and you'll have a better processor. I don't know, maybe everything else will be similar. Maybe the Nord will have a better camera, but will it really? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Deepak says, I'm not going to fall for all that clickbaity marketing. We want a quality product for a reasonable price. And I think at the end of the day, that's all we really want. A lot of people who are loyal OnePlus fans are just hoping for that lower price and a good quality product. I don't think we need all of this hype all of this dramatic docu-series kind of stuff. I just think it's too much. Uh, Paul Hendricks is in here. Uh, hey, Paul, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Team 299, just hold your horses for like half a year. That's also a good point. Uh, Deepak says here in Italy, OnePlus 8 uh, official is 719 euros and the 8 Pro a whopping 919 euros. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, Paul saying, uh, Brian, yes, especially uh, the 7 Series has a more powerful uh, uh, dock, dock, DOC, DAC, dock, <laughs> and lesser or equal uh, camera sensor. Am I reading that wrong? Or SOC, is that what you meant to say? Maybe SOC. Um, I messed up meant if Nord has less or equal. Uh, Deepak says the 7 Pro sells for $4.99 on Amazon here. It's a flagship. Hey, Ronaldo, what's going on, man? Ronaldo, Ronaldo, I'm sorry, Ronaldo de Leon. Uh, nice to see you. What's up, Jerome? Same here. I wanted a cheaper price, and that's what I was hoping for. And I, I guess it's still possible, but when, when that docu series said sub 500, it, it kind of sounded like a nail in the coffin. Like, yeah, it's probably going to be under 500 bucks. Probably won't be 350. Probably won't even be 400. But maybe. Maybe the $500 one will be the high-end version, right? Maybe $499 will be their 12 gig RAM, 256 or 512 internal storage version. So maybe their 450 would be 128 with eight gigs of RAM. No, nah, I don't know. Or maybe 400 would be 128 gigs of RAM or 128 gigs of internal storage with six gigs of RAM. I don't know. I this is this is us speculating again, and we can do this all day. But um, I think again with that docu series saying sub 500, they're they're pretty much telling us it's going to be about 500 dollars for this phone. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Anyway, Ronaldo, uh, nice to have you in the stream. Nice to see you. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, Okay, so uh, let's see here. Um, I think that's all I have for the OnePlus Nord, um, unless you guys had anything to uh, discuss with it. I, I know they're talking about it being released in Europe and India first, and I'm guessing that's because, well, I don't know why. 
it 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 always they always make it sound like India is usually the market that's buying the cheaper phones, but I feel like people here in the states would appreciate a cheaper phone with better specs at a better price instead of just having what the iPhone SE and what else? The Galaxy what? A51? No, no thank you. Uh the now over 1 year old Pixel 3a? Sure, it's it's a good deal, but I would rather have the 4a. Like I need other competition in the $400 price point. I need something else than an iPhone SE. Um to fill that void I have in here. <laughs> I need the Nord. That sounds, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for it still, but at a $500 price point, I, like Brian was saying, I would probably buy a OnePlus 7 Pro or a OnePlus 7T instead. I don't think I would spend $500 for this phone. Honestly, I don't think I would, unless there's some crazy feature in there that they're going to add, but I don't, I don't see that happening. I really don't. Um, okay, let me go back into chat here. Um, Deepak says, today we got a lot of competition for 500. You can get last year's top dogs, the Galaxy S10, iPhone XR, LG V50, et cetera. Yeah, for 500 bucks, you could get a lot of phones still. Big House Production says, soaking up this tech news, Ronaldo. Oh, you guys are talking how's the Pixel 4 XL. Um, Ahmed is in here as well. Ahmed uh, Husameddin. Husameddin right? Am I saying that right, Ahmed? Ahmed, nice to have you in the stream. What's up, man? Nice haircut. Thanks. Uh, I got a haircut. What day did I get a haircut? On Thursday. So this haircut is now five days old. Uh, actually, I just forgot to put a hat on. <laughs> I was kind of in a rush and I didn't realize I didn't have my hat on, which is funny because I even looked at myself on cam before I, well, whatever. Anyway, Ahmed, welcome to the stream. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. Anyway, we can always circle back to the OnePlus Nord, but let us continue on. Let us talk about Motorola. This next story also from The Verge is saying Motorola's unlocked edge gets a $700 price tag with a slight spec bump. Is anybody looking to buy an unlocked Motorola edge? I mean, 700 bucks is a lot cheaper than the Edge Plus at 1,000 bucks, but I also thought that Edge Plus got a discount recently. Although again, you can only get it for Verizon, so if you want a proprietary phone on a proprietary carrier, then, well, I don't know. I mean, I, that's the last thing I would do is buy a proprietary phone from a proprietary ca carrier. That's uh, kind of hard to say. Although the edge does look nice and I heard you could take the edges off, like you could turn that, that off, which I think is pretty cool. But um, I think we all know what we want. We want we want a successor to the Moto X Pure. That's what that's what I want. That's what I want. I want I want a resurgence of the Moto X Pure. Um, Will that ever happen? I don't, oh, actually I meant to talk about another story today, but I forgot to pull that up. Anyway, Motorola has announced that the regular Edge, the cheaper sibling to its recently released flagship Edge Plus will cost $700, which puts it at $300 less than the $1,000 Edge Plus. There's still no release date though, outside of the previously announced quote, summer window. Motorola has also announced that it'll bump up the specs a bit for the standard Edge. Instead of the originally planned 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, the Edge will now offer 6 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. The Edge features a similar design to the Edge Plus, including the eponymous, eponymous. I don't know that word. Guys, what does eponymous mean? <laughs> A uh, 6.7-inch edge display, but it achieves that cheaper price point by cutting down on some of the specs. The Snap 865 on the Edge Plus is replaced with a slightly slower Snap 765. Oh, I didn't realize this. So, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so $700 for a Snapdragon 765. That aligns right in line with the LG Velvet. 700 bucks for a snap 765. I feel like this is what the pixel five is going to do too. They're probably going to price the pixel five at 700 bucks. If this is what the edge plus is doing, if this is what the velvet is going to do, I, I hope they don't do that. But, um, I was not, I was assuming this was going to be an 865 for 700 bucks. And I was going to be like, that's not bad for an unlocked phone. But I didn't realize that this edge plus is going to have, um, a 765. Damn, 
that's that's disappointing. The battery drops down from 5,000 to 4,500 milliamp hours. There's no wireless charging, and the Edge Plus still wins out with 12 gigs of RAM. I don't know. This phone doesn't sound that appealing anymore. <laughs> Additionally, the triple camera array has downgraded specs, 64 megapixel main lens, and just two times optical zoom, and no OIS for the eight telephoto sensor megapixel. Although the 16 megapixel ultra wide and Tama flight sensor are the same. It's just such a, a kind of a handicapped version uh, of the phone or a stunted ver I, I'm trying to figure out a more better, a more better word. Uh, it just doesn't sound very appealing at this point. 5G support is both more limited on the edge. It lacks a millimeter wave support. I don't really care about that. Uh, just six gigahertz, uh, just sub six gigahertz support and more open. That's because unlike the edge plus, the edge will be sold unlocked instead of being locked to Verizon. That's it. I don't know. 700 bucks, Snap 765, six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. For $700, I still think you can find a better phone out there. $700, you can get the OnePlus 8. I think the OnePlus 8 would probably be worth it just in terms of performance specs alone instead of this Motorola Edge. Am I, am I not right in saying that? Would you rather buy an LG Velvet or a OnePlus 8 at the same price? I would rather buy a OnePlus 8. Yeah, this doesn't even have wireless charging then. Not, not that I really use wireless charging, but 700 bucks for a 7 I, I don't know. I, I know I'm so focused. I'm always so hyper-focused on what chipset they put in there, but I can't help... Um, I can't help but uh, feel that that is a deal breaker for me. So I don't know. All right, man. Uh, Deepak... Uh, Murthy is saying, uh, Jerome, believe me, the Xiaomi Mi 9T takes almost the same quality photos as the OnePlus 7T. I got both. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I, I meant to buy that phone. Um, I just, I'm, I'm saving a couple pennies for that Huawei P40 Pro Plus. Uh, but, uh, thank you for sharing that info. That's, that's also very good to know. Um, Ronaldo says, wait, you got a Pixel 4 XL for 458 bucks? Where'd you get it for that cheap? Or did you get that on Swappa? Did you talk about this before, Ronaldo? I, I don't even I don't even remember. Um, so let me see here. Uh, wait, Big House, that's a good price. You would pay seven hundred bucks for the Motorola Edge. I, th I still think that's a bit much for the seven sixty five. No, am I wrong? Uh, Vipul Jain, Vipul, Vipul. Am I saying that right? Who are you? Uh, my name is Jerome. This is a uh, hashtag TNT Joe fly tech news that Jerome Ortega finds interesting. Hi people. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for being very kind asking me who I am. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, Brian says Qualcomm after everyone over with the 765 prices. Deepak says, yeah, those 765 phones are way overpriced. Big house is saying $500 would be great. It would be. And actually this is a good segue for a different story that I have here that actually Brian gave me. So Brian, thank you for sharing this story. Uh, I will get into that in a second, but Vizikos is in here. Vizikos, I haven't seen you in a minute. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. Nice to have you. The edge display gave the name to the phone. The display is eponymous because it did that also, or because it did that. Uh, also, hi. Thank you, Vizikos, for for sharing that. Um, appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Nice to have you. I'm waving, but you can't there. Hi. Hi, Vizikos. Welcome. Welcome. Um, Big House says, I'd rather have the velvet with the dual screen. There you go. Uh, Deepak also says, I would get the velvet. I had the OnePlus 8. Cameras were not good. Do you think, so do you think that the cameras would be better on the velvet than didn't didn't I didn't I just read an article on the velvet? Didn't they say that the cameras weren't that good though? Or would you or do you guys just want the velvet because of that dual screen? I'm just trying to I'm just trying to like process what is important to you guys or why you would pick one phone over the other. And obviously there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just I'm just genuinely curious. Okay, guys, um, real quick. Uh, I know we're halfway through this. If you guys are watching the stream, if you're in here, please do not forget to hit that like button. I know that sounds very cliche and cheesy and not something I typically say, but doing so really helps me out. I think in an algorithmic way, I think it helps people find the stream. So please, if you guys have a chance, hit that like button. 
it would help me, I guess, in a way. Also, really quick, I do stream Mondays through Fridays every day at 2 p.m. Central. So if you want to get notified on that and you are not a subscriber to this channel, please consider being a subscriber. Uh, that is a great way to support me uh, if you can. Uh, and finally, if you are in the chat and you notice that some people have green in their names or they have a red Chicago star next to their names, that is because they are part of the Phone Jerome fam. Uh, I was trying to get that picture up. There you go. And you could be part of this fam too. All you got to do is click that join button for as little as 99 cents a month. You will get the green in your name. You'll get the red Chicago star. You'll get to use custom emoji and you'll get your name in every single one of my intros and outros of uh, every single one of my live streams is what I was trying to say. Uh, you, could do for, you could do so for, again, as little as 99 cents a month. There are different tiers as well, but you can read into that later. If you can't find that join button, you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. I will leave it at that. Let us move on to our next story. That is just my little marketing thing there. Either way, for you guys to support, uh, regardless is, you know, it means a lot to me. So thank you. I will skip stories here because Brian gave me this story since we're talking about Qualcomm, since we're talking about the 765. LG with the velvet, since we're talking about the velvet, LG is asking suppliers to lower part costs. I don't know how Brian found this article. This is from the Korea Times, and it's not a site I typically go on. But LG asks suppliers to lower part costs. I haven't read this yet, by the way. LG Electronics is attempting to cut the cost of manufacturing its new mobile velvet by taking aim at necessary parts and its partner companies that supply them. Again, really quick for anybody who just came in, the LG Velvet is a new phone from LG that looks very beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful phone is what I'm trying to say, but it comes at a pretty costly price at 700 plus dollars with a Snapdragon 765 chipset, which isn't their flagship chipset. It doesn't have a quad deck. So the audio isn't the best. It's not usually typically what LG has. LG typically has much higher quality audio and this doesn't have it. Also from the review I read, I heard the cameras weren't the best, but uh, again, $700 is a pretty high price point and it looks like LG is trying to maybe lower that price. Overall, the corporate outlook isn't too bad for LG Electronics given its solid global positioning in its core products, diverse product portfolio and relatively stable financial structure. Um, I'm not gonna read through the more marketing part of it here, but, but unsurprisingly, any meaningful recovery recovery in its handset business is unlikely as its continuous restructuring and cost reduction efforts aren't enough to offset the company's already weak market position in the structurally, structurally, structurally <laughs> slowing smartphone market. That means LG needs to undertake more cost cutting in line with the corporate efforts to relocate its production lines and increase the portion of outsourcing. LG recently unveiled its velvet smartphone in an attempt for it to be taken seriously as a design leader based on its success in the early 2000s when it had a substantial global share with feature heavy mobile phones. Now, because LG wants to be seen as a leader with attractive mid-range devices in a world of okay looking competitive flagship devices, the firm is looking to procure components at lower prices. Okay, so such efforts seem to pay off in its negotiation with local suppliers. However, a sticking point is Qualcomm, which holds the key in determining the overall manufacturing cost of the LG Velvet. The San Diego headquartered firm is reported to have refused LG's request for a discount on Snapdragon 765 chip systems, according to sources familiar with the issue. The reason I bring this up is Qualcomm lately, at least from what I've been reading from multiple articles, is the reason phone prices have been soaring lately. The reason we have $1,400 Galaxy S20 Ultras, $1,000, I don't know, Galaxy S20s, uh, just the, the $1,000 Motorola Edge Plus, apparently, you know, and even phones like the, the $900 OnePlus 8 Pro, because the Snapdragon series chipsets are expensive and that is that looks like the the big factor of why phones are so expensive today now is that the 100 truth i don't know but that is what a lot of sources are pointing at is that qualcomm really has been upping their prices and because they're really the only big main manufacturing chipset for at least android 
I know there are other chipsets. So I am not, it's not that I don't know that, but I feel like in the market today, Qualcomm is usually the leader there. And I feel like they are putting their foot down when it comes to the pricing. And so we're kind of being monopolized in that kind of way. And we're paying the price for it as a consumer. We're paying, we're paying top dollar for a lot of this stuff. And even when it comes to something like the Snapdragon 765, which is supposed to be the cheaper version, it still sounds like $700 for a Snapdragon 765 just doesn't sound like a fair price point. Anyway, um, such efforts seem to pay off in its negotiation with local suppliers, which kind of makes me think about the OnePlus Z or the OnePlus Nord. They were supposed to work with MediaTek for chipset. And now they are, at least the rumors are, they're going to be working with Snapdragon to put a 765G in there. And from what I've read, they were able to get some kind of deal out of it. So maybe OnePlus got a deal out of it and LG didn't. How that works, I have no idea. I don't do all the behind the scenes kind of work when it comes to that. So who knows what kind of politics are being played there. Qualcomm, which holds the key in determining the overall manufacturing cost of the LG Velvet, the sand, oh, I already read this, I'm sorry. LG Electronics holds intensive negotiations with local and over overseas suppliers on a quarterly basis. The session this time was aimed at procuring parts and components at a discount from its suppliers. Most suppliers agreed to sell at discount, one source said. In 2019, LG and Qualcomm signed a global patent license agreement after the Korean firm had earlier claimed that they had been unable to settle their differences. Under the terms of the five-year royalty-bearing agreement, Qualcomm granted LG a patent license to develop, manufacture, and sell 3G, 4G, and 5G single-mode and multi mode uh, complete devices. The LG settlement is regarded as reminiscent of the surprising settlement between Qualcomm and Apple. Apple is also a very important customer for LG. A lot of these companies have very symbiotic relationships with each other. I mean, just reading that when it comes to the displays and whatever chipsets, and they, they all kind of have their hands in each other's pockets. I, I wonder if they were able to negotiate with Qualcomm, what would bring the price down of that LG Velvet? Would they be able to bring $700 down to 600? I, I'm, I'm with Big House though. I would rather pay $500 for that LG Velvet. And I don't know if I would be willing to pay more than that. And maybe my head is, I, see the thing is when that OnePlus Nord comes out, I mean, I guess $500 is fair. But I don't know. I guess I was so hell bent on it being 350 to 400 that I can't see myself paying 500. Maybe because in my head, I was just, that's what I really wanted to pay. <laughs> and I can't see myself um, paying something else. Uh, Brian with the dollar super chat. Brian, thank you so much, man. Thank you for the support. Um, thank you for the continued support. Brian is on an E something uh, super chat streak. So, Brian, thank you so much. Thank you for. Um, Again, that continued support. Thank you for being a moderator. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for always being in here as a regular. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, let me scroll back up uh, into the chat here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Oh, okay. Big House was saying he's replying to Ronaldo about his pixel. Okay, I gotcha. Um, Okay, so uh, Deepak saying 8 Pro has much better cameras. That's what I've heard. LG has a good camera software. It's been a while since I've used an LG. Um, yeah, Big House is saying, I love the dual screen concept. My LG G8X is great. I would love to test one of those dual screens out and see how much I would actually use it. Team Vry says, uh, shame about the quad deck. For sure, definitely for sure. Um, yeah, Big House is saying, uh, that's my only issue with the Velvet. Uh, yeah, Deepak also says, so sad LG dropped its rare jewel. And I wonder if it's just going to be for the Velvet or if it's going to be for other phones. And it also makes me wonder, did they did they drop it? Because if they knew they added it on, they would have had to up the price on the phone. So I wonder. And maybe they contemplated whether or not people were really using the quad deck or not. I, I, I don't know. Um, but Team Vry is right. It really helped their phones to stand out in a way. And it really did. Um Motorola needs to create uh, his own processor, whether I, I, I really don't know what Motorola is doing at this point. So for that to even happen, I just, I think they need to get a lot of other stuff in line before they 
I I don't know. Motorola right now is kind of an enigma to me. I don't, I really don't know what they're up to or what they're doing. But Juan Carlos, uh, welcome to the stream. Nice to have you. Nice to see you. Um, okay, let me see here. Um, Deepak is saying we are shifting towards portless phones. I don't one hundred percent agree. Oh, you're talking about the the quad deck? Is that what you mean? Um, I can see your point there. I can see your point there. I I actually don't. I haven't used my wired earbuds. I mean, I use my wired earbuds when I'm at home, when I'm editing video, but I have not used wired earbuds on any of my phones in a long time. I've been using my AirPods Pro for almost everything at this point. The Zico says a flat display could lower the, the velvet's cost. Um, yeah. And actually I, I prefer a flat display. I would rather have that. Um, I'd rather have that instead. Uh, expectations does funny things to how we look at things. It does because I think this whole time I've been preaching 400 bucks, 400 bucks, top price for the OnePlus Nord. And now it might be 500. So I don't know. We'll see. Gvoy888, I'm late. Came by to give a thumbs up. Gvoy888, thank you so much. Uh, my Long Beach brethren. Well, no longer Long Beach, but you're still in Long Beach. So Gvoy888, thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for uh, coming by to, to say what's up. Appreciate you stopping by, man. All right. Um, let us move on. The next story I have, what is this? <laughs> I don't, I really didn't go through my stories today, guys. Google's nearby share starts rolling out to a lucky few. Google's airdrop competitor finally hits beta. I don't know if any of you guys have gotten this. I haven't even checked my pixel to see it, if I've gotten it yet. But if I do, I will test it out and I will give you uh, whatever info I have on it. If you're not familiar with, with what nearby share is, it is Google's version of airdrop. And if you don't know what AirDrop is, it's pretty much like if I had my iPhone, which is right here, and I had, you know, six pictures, six photos, and I wanted to push it to my MacBook Pro, I could do so without connecting any wires. And um, it looks like Google is starting to hit a beta with that. So let me see here. Google is preparing to launch nearby share an airdrop competitor for Android. It's currently being tested for a select few play service beta users. Android OEMs like Xiaomi have tried to build an airdrop competitor in the past. Google is rolling out nearby share a competitor to Apple's airdrop in beta. The feature has been spotted in testing for over a while now. For over a while now? That doesn't sound right. And this is the first time it would be made more broadly available. Spotted by Android Police, nearby share works for some users of the latest Google Play services beta update, something the company confirmed in a commitment in a comment to the news site. Okay, let me just, I wasn't able to enable it on my Pixel running Android 11, but like all of Google's beta updates, not everyone gets it at the same time, and that goes double for limited test, tests. So pretty simple to use. If it's enabled for your device, nearby share should appear in the share sheet when you want to share content. Upon first use, you'll be prompted to configure the basics like device name and visibility, as well as how you'd be sharing content, whether through Wi-Fi or data. I'm wondering, okay, so it'll be it'll only be able to share with nearby share capable phones as well, which will then prompt them to set the feature up on their device to begin receiving content. Okay, so Oh, I'm sorry. I had the screen on the wrong thing. I meant to put it here. But OK, I guess my first issue is the fact that when I use nearby share or if I had nearby share, I really wouldn't be like when I have my iPhone, I don't push other I don't push content I have on my iPhone to other people like that. If I wanted to share a picture or a photo, I would normally just text it, not share it that way. I mean, unless I had documents or something but that's not something I typically do. And if I did, I would email it. What I use this for, what I use it for on AirDrop is to move photos or videos to my MacBook Pro. What I was hoping for was a feature like Nearby Share to push it to my PC. That's what I thought I was going to be getting, but it looks like I'm not going to, it's, it's only going to be able to share files with other people with Android phones or people who have phones that are capable of nearby share. Let me ask you, I'm asking chat, how many of you, <laughs> I see a comment here by Grant, LOL, say share sheet three times fast. Share sheet, share sheet, share sheet. I'm, I'm pretty good with my vernacular, maybe. Share sheet, share sheet, share sheet. <laughs> okay, I'm done, I'm done. I will, I will go through chat later, guys. Uh, I wanted to ask, for anyone who has AirDrop, do you typically share files 
on airdrop to other people on your phones or do you use it for yourself? Because again, I feel like I would only use things like airdrop if I was just moving files from my PC to my, or from my phone, from my iPhone to my MacBook Pro. I don't see myself giving people files on my Android to other people on Android. If that was the case, again, I would just send a file through Telegram or email or send a photo through a message. I, I, I'm just trying to think what else I would use that for. Um, okay, let me just read on. Let me just finish this. Naturally, it'll only be able to share with nearby share. Okay, capable phones. We talked about that. Um, like with many stock Android features, nearby share is a more streamlined and standardized feature that addresses a problem other OEMs have tried to solve themselves. We've had Samsung's S-Beam and Huawei share, but none of those solutions have proven to be anything more than gimmicks for their respective uh, companies. With the nearby share, the hope is that it will gain ubiquity due to being on every Android phone. As with all features that rely on consumer behavior changing, it's something that no technical implement implementation can really tackle. Again, I don't really see the point if I can't move it to a PC or something similar, or even a Chromebook. Can I move it to a Chromebook? Is Chromebook going to have nearby share? I mean, eventually they will. I just, well, I, it's like, yeah, I can move it to a Chromebook, but I, so like the only reason I ever move pictures to my PC or my MacBook Pro is to edit video when I'm doing camera comparison videos. So maybe my case, maybe my own user case is very, very niche. But even if this was able to move to a Chromebook, I couldn't use it because I can't use Premiere Pro on a Chromebook. I don't know when Adobe or when Chrome OS is going to be able to uh, implement using uh, the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite or Adobe Adobe Suite on a Chromebook. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I don't know. Okay, let me get back into chat here. Um, so let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> G-Boy says, I'm an LVC alum now. That's very true. Uh, okay. Um, Brian says, a lot of iOS users or a lot of iOSers use AirDrop. I mean, I use it. I use it uh, all the time, honestly. Paul's saying only to other phones. Juan says, that's useless. Yeah, I don't really see a point. Uh, Big House says, I've never used it. Daniel Lufker is in here. What up? What up, Daniel? What's going on? Actually, now that Daniel's here, I will point something else out too. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second here. Let me just go through the rest of the chat. Daniel and I, we were talking today. We had a meeting today. Anyway, um, Team Rai says, my wife right now says that she uses AirDrop to share photos mostly. So she does. She uses photos to share with other people. Is it because she's sending a ton of photos? Because I guess in my head, I'm like, why wouldn't you just text the photos? Am I wrong in thinking that? Because then I feel like you have, well, I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking of myself. I, I sometimes I forget that other people have different uses when they use it, but um, but maybe yeah, maybe she's sharing a, a whole bunch of photos. Because when I share a multitude, let's say I share like a block of photos, let's say I'm sharing ten to twenty photos, I will put that in a in a folder in Google Photos or Drive or whatever, and then I'll share that particular folder. Like say there was a wedding, and then I'll have a folder that says such and such is wedding. And then I would share it to a bunch of people and say, here, look at the pictures I did for this wedding or took or whatever. I think that's the only time I would ever share photos and I would do it in that form or fashion, but maybe because I never had nearby share. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to think if I would really use it in any other way. Deepak says, I use AirDrop for transferring heavy from iPhones to Macs all by myself. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, heavy files is what... Uh, Deepak is saying. Um, Team Rai says, since I'm on Android, I usually use Google Drive. I'm the same way. G-Boy says, never tried AirDrop myself, but I could see how it's useful and something I might enjoy on Android and Chromebooks. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I think it could be useful, but I think it needs to... I was hoping that Android was going to figure a way out to use it with PC. That's really what my, um, my hope was. Wi-Fi Direct worked for me. Why am I not remembering what Wi-Fi Direct does? Vizikos, remind me. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think how that works. Um, back when I was on iOS, I used it frequently, though. Juan Carlos says, I share 
things I will like to share, like Instagram from my MacBook to my iPad. There you go. Uh, yeah, Vazikos is saying sending files to PC is relatively easy. There are many ways. AirDroid, maybe. Actually, I think I've used AirDroid before. I mean, I know you could send files through Bluetooth, but I remember doing that before. It was such a kind of a tedious process, although maybe it isn't that bad anymore. It's been a while. It's really been a while since I've done anything but just send stuff to Google Drive. That's usually what I do at this point. Um, okay, Team Verizon saying, yeah, mostly for a ton of photos. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, she uses it mostly for on-the-spot situations, though. I gotcha. Okay. Um, Brian says, AirDrop doesn't require a third-party app. The built-in nature is for the laziest people, which is many. I mean, let's not say laziest. Let's say that it's it's a very convenient way of getting files pushed through. Is it not? I mean, I think at the end of the day, we want the most convenient ways of pushing stuff over. Uh, a less tedious process is a more frequently used one. Am I not correct in that statement? Um, so really quick, guys, uh, I, I do want to share, because Daniel was in here. Um, FYI, so I do these streams Monday through Friday, but... I am going to be starting new streams on a different channel. Uh, they are also going to be tech streams that is going to be to a different demographic and a different audience. And I have no idea how well that's going to be received. But uh, if you guys are looking for more content, I am going to start doing that on another channel. I will give you those details later. It will be tech related, but it might not be heavily based on phones. Uh, this is something that is all like on my end. The creative side is on my end here. So it's still going to be what I'm doing, what you're seeing now, but it's going to be tech related, maybe in terms of other kinds of tech, uh, not just phones, but just like tech in general, what's happening in the tech community, like even like in the hacking world and privacy issues and maybe more IT stuff that I don't share here. I might, what I want to do is kind of share like my IT knowledge or at least the fledgling, the fledgling IT knowledge I still have that has now probably been wearing away. But uh, it's something that I'm going to be doing on a different channel twice a week, twice a week for an hour. Um, but I will give you those details in the near future. So if that's something you might be interested in, I will let you know. I haven't exactly figured out a time frame, but it will be probably in the evenings, so later in the evenings. But uh, again, um, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. So uh, it's it's for a new channel that we're creating, and it's going to have a whole slew of different kinds of content, and I'm going to be a part of that slice. So I will share that with you guys if you guys would be interested in watching uh, a different type of tech, still similar but different in a way. So um, OK, anyway, um, <laughs> let me go through chat here. Deepak says, uh, laziness is the devil's workshop, so Apple is <laughs> the devil maybe maybe but so again it's not laziness it's why would we want to go through extra steps that's not lazy that's being efficient right i don't know <laughs> team rise says looking forward to the new tech show i will let you know when that that's coming out it, it's going to be coming out in july so actually it might be this first week i have to oh man i need to get on the ball about that anyway um so let's, uh, I'm just looking at the chat here. Android Life uh, just saw a Snapdragon 4100 for Android Wear. Pixel Watch coming. So yeah, I saw that too. Uh, I was actually going to, do I have that up here? I don't have that. I was going to talk about that, but I was like, well, what are they going to use it for? But um, I don't know how good that Snapdragon 4100 is for Android Wear, but uh, a Pixel Watch, I would love a Pixel Watch. I would love, love, love a Pixel Watch. Um but how good is that implementation going to be? Come on now. How good is the pixel right now? But maybe that's actually a really good point. And, and if I had thought that in my head about the pixel watch or the, the new, um, the new chipset coming for Android wear, then I would have actually brought that up, but that is a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. G boy, eight, eight, eight. Uh, why 2019 is here. Why what's going on? I guess your haircut took that <laughs> hashtag new beginnings really seriously. No, this was much shorter. Uh, during the pandemic, I had just used a, a, a one throughout the whole thing because I couldn't cut my hair. Then I went to the barber and then I kind of regretted it because I just don't, I still felt kind of uncomfortable going to the barber at the moment. But um, it looks nicer than just a one, although I'm very thin on the top, but you know, 
it is what it is. I can't do anything about that. Uh, Ruben, uh, Arcel Ruben, I hope you don't mind me calling you Ruben now that I know your name. Arcelin NYC uh, with a $3 super chat. So is my boy Jerome going to root again? Yes. Well, actually, I've been wanting to root. Uh, that's why I wanted to buy the, the Xiaomi um, Mi 9T. Is that right? But now I'm saving my money because I want to get the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. Guys, I am going to buy that phone. I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to buy that phone and I, I am going to make that my primary phone. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Well, Grant actually said that he has connections or has links to use Google Play services on it. But uh, I am actually going to try to use that Huawei P40 Pro Plus with no Google services and try to use it as stock, as it comes stock, mess with the camera and like put out some good content for that and just have that compete against the best of the phones and give you guys a really good camera comparison because I feel like I owe you guys a really good camera comparison. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I am gonna spend that 1600 bucks. I'm telling you guys right now, I am buying that P40 Pro Plus. I will probably do a ton of videos on that. Um, just wait. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, but our uh, Ruben, our in NYC, thank you for the three dollars super chat. Thank you for being such a a, a strong supporter lately. And, and I, I again, I'm I'm so bad. I need to update my my intros and outros. I have people that I need to add in there. Especially uh, today's the last day of June, so tomorrow I'm starting the July super chat. Anyway, our, uh, Ruben, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Thank you so much. Um, Okay, so uh, what am I saying, or what am I looking here, uh, looking at here? Gboy888 says, yeah, Android Wear needs work. Hopefully Fitbit purchase is integrated. I really hope Google does good things with Fitbit. I am waiting for them to, to do something proper uh, with the Fitbit and put Wear OS or whatever on it and get stuff working. Um, is it Wear OS? Am I thinking of Watch OS? Well, I'm, I'm already forgetting. I think it is Wear OS, right? Yeah, it is Wear OS. Team Verizon says, I couldn't wait on Wear OS to improve, so I gave up waiting and got a Fitbit instead, to be honest. Um, so Team Verizon, are you completely non-Apple at all? You won't even you won't even consider having a secondary... Um, I mean, you're a tech YouTuber, right? I would have imagined you'd at least have like an iPhone SE and kind of have... Well, uh, your wife has an Apple, right? So maybe you get to mess with that. I don't know. So just curious. Um, Ruben says, uh, definitely looking forward to a Pixel Watch. So am I if it ever comes out. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and I'm good with Ruben. If I could change my YouTube name, I would. Well, yeah. Okay, well, good. I will call you Ruben from now on. I, I might say Arcel and NYC here and there, but uh, thank you, Ruben. Appreciate you letting me know. Um, do I have, I have a, no oh my God, Android. <laughs> Android. I'm so sorry. Uh, I see two super chats. Uh, let me go first with Big House Productions with the five dollar super chat. Go for it, Jerome. Here's some help on that P40 Plus. Uh, Big House, thank you so much, man. Thank you for the five dollar super chat. Thank you guys for the support, uh, especially at the end of the month. Um, appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, guys. The the super chats lately have become kind of really regular, and like I am so thankful. I'm I'm honestly humbled flattered that you guys are so supportive. It really means a lot to me. I know that I always thank you guys, but really, I cannot thank you enough. And Andrew KPW, uh, I did not mean to say Android, but Andrew KPW, Android. Oh my God. Andrew, Andrew KPW, Andrew KPW. <laughs> Andrew, thank you so much. Uh, keep up the great work, man. Andrew, thank you. I haven't seen you in a while. I'm assuming you've been busy with work. Hopefully you've been catching the replays, but um, your your support, your donations have been always very generous. So Andrew, thank you so much. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being in the chat. Come on, Grant. <laughs> Guys, uh, Grant, with the $10 super chat, P40 Pro Plus Fund, now you have to get it. I, you know what? I am going to look at my funds. If I can buy it at the end of the week, I am going to buy it. Uh, Grant, if the best place to get it is on eBay from that same one that you, you told me about, please let me know. And I will purchase it this weekend for sure. Uh, Grant with the $10 super chat, Grant, thank you so much for the support guys, everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I will use that money definitely for, uh, the Huawei P40 pro plus fund. And I will share my, I will go in depth with that phone because that is going to be the most expensive phone I have ever bought. And if I'm going to use that as a business expense, I might as well get the most out of it. Um, so 
Grant, thank you so much. Guys, thank you. Brian with the five dollars. Brian, you already support so much. Brian with the five dollars super chat. P40 Pro P40 Pro Fund. Uh Brian, thank you, man. Guys, thank you. Stop now, please. Guys, it's okay. <laughs> no, guys, thank you. <laughs> Deepak with the four euro uh super chat. Deepak, you already donated earlier. Deepak, thank you. Okay, guys. Enough. Seriously, guys, thank you. Thank you for all the support today. This is a ton of money. Thank you so much. I will apply all of this. I am buying the phone this weekend. Let's just put it at that. I will buy it this weekend for sure. I will um I will share the invoice with you so you see how much money I pulled out to pay for that phone. Guys, thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much. Uh why 2019 is correct saying donation explosion. That is a very big donation explosion. Guys, thank you again. Thank you so much for the support. Let me scroll back up into chat here so I can make sure I didn't miss anybody. Um okay. So again, thank you. Everybody, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, Andrew says, uh, hey, man, so tired from work, but good to see you and everyone. Andrew, thank you so much for making it. Appreciate it so much. Um, appreciate your support as well. Okay, guys, let me uh, scroll down, make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, Paul says, the big disadvantage with Huawei is their bootloaders locked forever. Is it really? Is that true? What am I going to do now? Just run stock? forever, I guess. I didn't know that. I don't know. We'll see. Ceramic back. Awesome camera. I'm trying to put the positives, Paul. The Huawei P40 Pro Plus will be my, you know, what I'm telling myself is the Nexus 6P was one of my favorite phones of all time. And that was a Huawei phone and mine didn't get boot looped. So this P40 Pro Plus is going to kill it. It's going to kill it guys. It's going to kill it for 1600 bucks. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll get some good videos out of it for sure. For sure. Team Vry says, I actually like a lot of what Apple does, just lack the budget to fully immerse into the ecosystem. That makes sense. And especially at their high prices, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Deepak is saying, no, Jerome, don't throw top dollars on a non-Google phone. I, I, I really want to test it out though. I really want to test the camera out. I know a lot of people have been pushing me away from it, but I think I've convinced myself at this point. I'm, I'm already, I already told you guys I'm going to buy it this weekend. So I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Um, okay. Uh, Andrew KVW says, I love Android. I've been watching the recaps. Well, thank you, An Andrew. Appreciate you. Um, always supporting. Appreciate you, you know, watching the streams and everything. So guys, again, thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for all the support. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anyone. If I did, please tell me. Um, <laughs> Deepak says, no hat stream brings donations. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Brian says, people load Google services with certain APKs. I mean, Brian was saying that there is a way to do it, but I want to try to to use that. Huawei P40 Pro Plus, at least for maybe the first month without Google services. At the end of the day, I have my iPhone 11 Pro. So if I really needed to pull out that phone, I would instead. But I don't know. Maybe what I'll do is I'll not even carry my iPhone 11 Pro. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Let's continue on. We still got a good amount of stories. We're over an hour into it, but uh, I, it's it's a good day. So let's. Um, you guys have been so supportive today. So let's move on. This was disappointing news for me. Um, YouTube TV's price is increasing to $65 a month, effective immediately. Uh, I have YouTube TV. Actually, my mom has YouTube TV, and we've kind of cut it up a bit so other people get to use it, so the price isn't too expensive. But now that it's uh, increasing to $65 a month, um, now I got to make sure I have six people using it so we can cut that price down a, a little more. I had no idea this was coming. I haven't really watched a lot of TV in a while. So to see this, I was like, oh man, not again. When I had a uh, YouTube TV, I was one of the B I was one of the original users because Chicago was one of the first cities to use YouTube TV or that it launched in. And I was paying 35 bucks a month. Was anyone here part of that $35 a month crew when YouTube TV was only 35 a month? I split that up into six accounts. And that was such a cheap price for YouTube TV at the time. But now they have uh, increased it from 35 to 50 and now from 50 to 65. So new pricing comes with a handful of Viacom CBS channels. These are probably channels I don't, I don't even really watch TV anymore. So for me, it's just, I don't know. 
Anyway, YouTube TV's monthly price is jumping from 15 by 15 to 65. The new pricing lines up among the higher tier of TV streaming services. The price goes into effect immediately for new subscribers, but current subscribers have until July 30th. You knew it was going to happen. I didn't know because I haven't kept up. It was just a matter of when YouTube TV's price is going up $15 a month to $64.99. Who here uses YouTube TV? I, I mean, I did it because my mom had to cut the cord because she was paying way too much for her cable services and I got her YouTube TV instead. I just, I didn't realize it was going to go up in price. The change is effective immediately for those signing up to YouTube TV for the first time and it'll hit current customers on their next billing cycle. The increase certainly wasn't unexpected given that YouTube TV is adding 14 new Viacom CBS channels this summer. See, this isn't the biggest, I don't watch TV anymore. I don't know about you guys. The only thing I watch now is YouTube. I literally, the, the only service I really would pay for at this time would be YouTube premium. I don't really watch TV. I watch YouTube. I don't watch Netflix. I don't watch Hulu. I don't watch Disney plus or HBO max or whatever services are out there. I watch YouTube and I watch Twitch. Those are the two platforms I watch. I sometimes when I watch, when I, when my mom is watching something or whatever, and I try to watch a movie, I can't get engaged anymore. I'm like, I would rather watch real people talk. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that will change in time again. But right now I'm just on a YouTube kick. So let me just see what channels they have here. As we continue to evaluate how to provide the best possible service and content for you, our membership price will be $64.99. This new price takes effect today, June 30th. Uh, and then... So for people who are current customers, then it'll uh, take place on July 30th. We don't take these decisions lightly, realize how hard this is for our members. Um, so it reflects the rising cost of content. And we also believe it reflects the complete value of YouTube TV from our breadth of content, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then they talk about what it compares with other streaming services. That's it. What what is the lineup? Where is the extra lineup? Are they taught on on or did they already add all these channels and I just was not aware of uh what these channels were? So is this is this the entire lineup right now? Is this everything on it? I don't know. I, I have to, I have to see if it's, I mean, it's worth it to my mom because she watches a lot of TV still, but for me, it's just not, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, moving on. Well, let me, let me, let me go back to the stream real, real quick in chat. Uh, team Verizon says, uh, that's pretty expensive. We'll probably stick with Amazon prime and Netflix. Yeah. That's probably a cheaper solution. That's the thing too. My mom has Amazon, uh, prime. My mom has Netflix and well, She's been really busy now because my mom's been making masks on the side instead of just watching TV all day. So she doesn't watch TV as much, but she has Netflix, Amazon, now YouTube TV. Uh, I just, it's just a lot of services. It's a lot of services. Uh, we mostly watch TV via the Amazon Fire Stick. And I used to have one and mine was modded at the time, but I haven't really messed with anything like that since. Deepak says, I only stream YouTube through Chromecast on my 65 inch Samsung, rarely Netflix and Disney Plus. Uh, Team Vry says, a bit off topic, but I thought just now, Jerome, will you be discussing gaming on the new show as well? Actually, I, I could. Gaming isn't my forte. It's just I don't know too much about gaming. But if there's any gaming related content, I would love to talk about that on that channel. Um, it'll be an hour of just open discussion, I think. I think I might dig more into a lot of like privacy issues, um, hacker kind of stuff, and just like make people aware of like maybe the injustices or like how Daniel will call it, like the corruption when it comes to tech, like that, that's kind of my spin on it. But I also want to talk about like good deals for people. I want to, I, I'm going to be talking to a demographic that probably doesn't know tech as well as like everyone in here, but I want to try to find a balance between that two. But uh, I might, I might, uh, that is actually a really good topic. So I, I appreciate you uh, bringing that up. Ruben says, I had the $35 YouTube TV and lost it without paying attention, but that's too much for me. I thought I was weird, mostly watching YouTube premium myself. I'm the same way. I don't really don't watch anything else. I mean, it's also the fact that I am stuck in this bedroom most of the day. So I, 
I currently don't have an apartment. I'm not living in Chicago, which is sad, but like with the pandemic, with me like in between jobs, it's just it's just not the right time. I would love to get my own place right now, but I don't know, there's a lot of things coming down. I, you know, um I have this job offer and like a lot of like pieces are starting to move and I'm trying to like I don't know, I will keep you guys filled in at at, at the very least the one thing that will stay consistent and constant is this stream. And I will always make sure to do this daily team for is saying, speaking of TV, my parents still have a local cable subscription though. That's my mom, my mom, my mom, my aunt, my uncle. The, the one reason they didn't want to get rid of their TV or rid of cable was because of the Filipino channel. That's why that, that was really the channel that they watched more than anything else was the Filipino channel. And then once I was able to get them off because they, they went from paying 300 something dollars a month to now 85. And that's a, such a huge discount and even better internet at the same time. But, um, getting rid of the Filipino channel, I was able to figure out a way to just push stuff on Chrome on the Chromebook to the TV. And now they can watch 24 or us, or I can't, I don't have a good accent. <laughs> Uh, or, um, what's the other Filipino show that they watch? I don't know. Other Filipino shows. Anyway, uh, Brian says no live sports makes TV makes these subscriptions unworthy for me. And so I was the same way. It was the only reason I wanted to keep cable was for, uh, sports, but you want to know the best answer here. Here is how you beat this. Brian, here is how you beat live sports. Stop watching live sports. <laughs> I know that's not easy for a lot of people, but I have in a lot of ways, I have given up on live sports. Um, also because like watching the NBA today is really no fun, at least for me. I feel like it's so everyone creating these super teams and all that kind of stuff. It just, it doesn't have the same appeal that it used to when I was younger. So I don't really, I have just given up on live sports. I watch esports. I know that might be sad to say, but I watch a lot of Rocket League esports, but that, that's about it at this point. Uh, Y2019 says, way too many streaming services. I 100% completely agree, which is why I don't do any of it. I have decided I'm not gonna do streaming services because there's too many. And I feel like you have to buy all of them if you wanna be engaged in all of that stuff. And I'm like, no, I'll just be engaged on YouTube. I'll watch YouTube content. There's tons and tons of content that you can watch there that will keep you entertained. And for the most part, I'm so busy with work that TV is the very last thing I do. It is, I watch maybe like 20, 30 minutes of YouTube probably a day. And that's like in between like working, laying on the bed before I go to sleep on my phone. And that's really about it. Um, <laughs> Team Rice says, oh my God, 24 horas is a staple in the Philippines. Yeah, they watch that all the time. Uh, Y2019 says, I was not here in the beginning. What's a new show about? Why, uh, I am, uh, I'm going to start um, live streaming on a new channel about tech, about an hour, twice a week. It is going to be a little more, it's not going to be based on phones. It's going to be a mix of things in terms of tech. Maybe like trying to help beginners find like, the proper phone, laptop, devices, just a mix of things. Talk about like privacy issues, hacking issues, what to look out for, things of that nature. But when that comes, I will let you guys know, but it is coming soon, it is coming soon. Um, okay, so let me see here. Uh, you guys are talking about sports. Dame Dollar is fun to watch. I don't know who Dame Dollar is. Is it sad that I don't know who that is, Brian? Please don't flame me if I if if he's really popular and I don't know who he is. Uh, the 2011 Mavs were the last non-super team champs, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I I agree. I can't remember the last time. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds about right. Um, oh, Damian Lillard, Dame Dollar. Oh, yeah. See, this is how much I know lately. I don't. Oh, that makes me feel bad. Uh, Big House says, love college football. I'm going to miss it if there's no season this fall. I, You know what, Big House? Uh, yeah, you're a big sports guy, right? You're a big college sports guy. Who's your team again? I, I know you had it up, I think, on your Instagram. I forgot who your, who your team is. Is it Michigan? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, I am not that big of a college person, but I know people love college football. People love college basketball. Anyway, um, 
so let me see here. Why says also will that Friday night stream be weekly? So why it is weekly, but it's not it's not on my channel weekly. It rotates depending on the streamer. And this Friday I might not be on it, but you should check it out. You should check those all those guys. They're great guys. They have um, they have really great insights, and those are the guys that started me on streaming. Um, they, I, I thank them for for being a big part of what I'm doing today. So, um, yeah, Big House says yes, Michigan. Okay, I, I, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, guys, let's move on here. I, I might be closing this hour out. My voice is just kind of, uh, you know, a little tired. So, this article from The Verge, and I will not say this because I don't want to get your phones to go off, but blank blank Google smart home events scheduled for July 8th. So it looks like we might be seeing some new products. Is anybody looking to buy new products when it comes to smart speakers, promising new features for smart home developers and users? Although I don't know, I haven't read this article, so maybe it's not a smart speaker. Is this, oh, it's an illustration. Google is hosting a virtual smart home developer event on July 8th in lieu of its canceled Google I.O. conference the company has announced, promising to cover new and upcoming features for smart home developers and users. The online works with blank Google Smart Home Summit as the event is catchily, catchily titled, includes a 45-minute keynote, a series of developer sessions, and a panel featuring Google and other companies in the smart home industry. The keynote, which will be presented by Google Product Management Director of the Smart Home Ecosystem, Michelle Turner, will go over Google's new smart home API features along with their benefits for developers and users. Although it's developer-focused, previous Google I.O. keynotes have introduced, uh, introduced new smart home products and services. Google says it will use uh, the summit to share our recent smart home product initiatives. Google smart home, Google's smart home division has been busy since 2019's Nest rebrand. Last year, the company released the Nest Mini Smart Speaker, the Nest Wi-Fi Mesh Router. These are so long to say. A new smart display called the Nest Hub Max. I don't like this Nest name. Earlier this year, it also revamped its Nest Aware subscription for its smart home security cameras and announced a series of improvements for the Google Assistant. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I, I haven't bought a smart speaker in a long time or a new smart speaker in a long time. It's been a while. Um, I don't see myself buying one in the near future. My mom uses it to set her timers and alarms. That's it. I I don't even use assistant on my phone anymore. I really don't. I just, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. But for anybody who's looking forward to it, I mean, I'll definitely check it out. I'll probably take a look and see what's up with it. But really, that's about it. I'm not too excited. So um, that's, I don't really have much to share with that. So uh, <laughs> Team Rice says, uh, still no 4A. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's disappointing. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know when that 4A is going to come out. Um, why 2019 says Google trolling so much that they will talk first about a smart home before a cheap phone at the best time, unless it gets teased here or something. Why? Come on now. You know, they're not going to talk about the, the 4A. It's not going to come out there. They're probably going to have a new product that can be available today, you know, on July 8th, but no new phone no new phone. So, all right. I am about to close this off, but, uh, since we were talking about the Huawei, since I'm talking about buying this, uh, P40 pro plus that I will be ordering this weekend. I promise you guys, Huawei's 2021 flagships might not be powered by Kirin chipsets. Will MediaTek be the savior? Huawei's smartphone division is going through a rough time after having its software rights taken away. The band now also puts its hardware division in a frenzy. If matters don't improve, it will be forced to abandon its high silicon chipsets and look at third-party alternatives. All Huawei flagships are powered by in-house Kirin chipsets that are designed by its high silicone subsidiary and contract manufactured and contract manufactured by TSMC. However, additional additional sanctions imposed in May prohibited the two companies from having trade relations going forward. This is such a shame. While existing orders will be honored, such as the Kirin 1020 chipset, Huawei will be left without a chip supplier soon. Reports suggest that the upcoming Huawei Mate 40 flagship might be unaffected, but its 2021 flagships might not be. A notable industry insider 
mobile chip expert took to Weibo to share that its next wave of flagships with a five nanometer chipset will not have processors designed by high silicon. If this turns out to be true, the Huawei P50 series will be the first high-end smartphone to not implement a Kirin SoC. I don't know how bad that's gonna affect Huawei. It already sounds like they're getting stripped of everything at this point. It's also scary because I wanna buy, buy a Huawei phone and it's just like, how much more can they do to a company? Um, I might have this discussion with Daniel. Daniel is more of a politically, uh, like he knows, he knows the stories behind a lot of this stuff. And I might have him as a guest one day and have a conversation about, um, things like this, about why they ban stuff like this. What are the real core issues of why it's happening? But, um, you know, if, if we do, I will let you guys know. So, uh, okay. Why, why says I have to remain hopeful about pixels, not only you, but me, and I think a lot of people in, in this chat feel the same way. Fig House says, if Huawei starts using media tech, their profits will slip, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know how good their Kirin chipsets are, but from everything I've heard, Huawei makes really good hardware, and they're, they're really on top of what they do. That would be a shame if they had to um, find an alternative just because they're getting all of these sanctions put on them. So. I really don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, uh, it won't be that bad, but I, you never know. You never know. So, okay, guys, I think that might be it for the hour. I am, I am kind of like talked out, but I do want to thank everybody for joining the stream today. I want to thank everybody for all the support today, guys, uh, for people who liked, for people who subscribed, but I mean, for people who went that extra mile and they ended up uh, super chatting today. There were a ton of super chats today. And I want to thank everybody for all that extra support. It means so much to me. And I will be taking that support and um, pushing it towards a new Huawei P40 Pro Plus that I will be making a good amount of videos on. Rest assured, you will be getting a good amount of uh, camera comparison videos. But um, yes, guys, so thank you so much. Um, tomorrow, I will be streaming again at the same time at 2 p.m. Central. We will do it all over again. Uh, I see why saying hopefully MediaTek has more 1000 plus processors because of demand. Hopefully they already had problems putting the 1000 plus on the X10 Max. So they had to put it, they had to put an 800. I had no idea. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with Huawei if they're going to use MediaTek or what's going to happen, but, um, Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I am uh, I'm running out of gas here, so uh, the outro is about to come, but I want to thank you guys so much. Please come back tomorrow. Let's do it all over again, 2 p.m. Central. We'll talk more news. We'll talk more tech and uh, whatever I have to share. Um, you guys will be first to know. If you guys have anything to share, please let me know in the chat, and um, that's it. Hopefully, audio works this time. It didn't work at the beginning. If not, I will get that audio fix for tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. I will also update the TNT Joe Fi um, intro and outro so I get everybody on there properly. So it is a new month, though. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Have a good one, guys. Take it easy. Bye now. That's why I had the audio off. There you go.
Thank you.